we are a, a, not only a classical colony, we are more a colony today than we were 30 years ago. Hello, Fernando. Welcome to my show. Thank you. You advocate for the independence of Puerto Rico. How much influence can people like you wield on this process? To give you an example, the vote for independence in Puerto Rico, since, the, since it became a U.S. colony in 1898, support for independence has fluctuated. For example, in the last election in 2020, the, the candidate for governor of my party, the Puerto Rican Independence Party, obtained 14% of the vote. Mm -hmm. And there is another political party which is sympathetic to independence that also obtained 14% of the vote. So <clears throat> the support for independence in Puerto Rico is not marginal. It, 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 it is in fact growing. Puerto Ricans do not consider themselves culturally uh, Americans. We consider ourselves to be Latin Americans. Although legally, being a possession of the United States means that we are, we are US citizens. But culturally, in Puerto Rico, even those who say they favor statehood are Latin Americans and speak Spanish, and Spanish is the language of Puerto Rico, and our identification is as a separate nation. Whether that becomes politically viable, that the national culture also aspires to national independence will depend on circumstances. Up to now, the will, the political will of the United States has been to maintain colonialism. Uh, and, and therefore the people of Puerto Rico have absolute uncertainty as to what the consequences of independence would be. Is the relationship between Puerto Rico and the U.S. today similar to that of a colony and a suzerain? It, 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 it is a classical colonial relationship, for example, <laughs> the most important laws that apply in Puerto Rico are made in the Congress of the United States with no participation because Puerto Ricans do not vote for congressmen. Puerto Ricans do not vote for the president of the United States. So the laws, the most important fundamental laws that apply in Puerto Rico are from the United States and Puerto Rico has nothing, does not have to approve them. At the same time, in the past few years, we, although we have enjoyed a certain level of local self-government, particularly since the 1940s, that self-government now has been eroded, minimized, because the Puerto Rican government went bankrupt in 2016, uh, Puerto Rican government became bankrupt. And as part of that process of bankruptcy, the Congress created a board, a financial supervi supervisory board that in effect has become the ultimate government in Puerto Rico. So we are a, a, not only a classical colony, we are more a colony today than we were 30 years ago. And what do you think are the reasons that the U.S. refuses to accept Puerto Rico into the Union? Puerto Ricans do not want to be Americans. So Puerto Rico is not a candidate to be a state for the same reason that Guatemala is not a candidate or Jamaica is not a candidate. They are different countries. For historical reasons and historical accidents, Puerto Rico became a colony more than 100 years ago. Uh, and Puerto Rico, is, its, its cultural identity is incompatible with a unitary national project, and that is recognized by the United States. The problem is that 
if they had said, we do not want Puerto Rico to be a state, I could understand that perfectly. But what they are not saying is that if it's not going to be a state, then this is the option of independence. But they have not offered that because they also wanted for strategic and political reasons to keep control over Puerto Rico. So we are caught like, like an elevator between two floors. <laughs> uh, statehood is not an alternative for reasons that I can understand and sympathize with. But then again, independence is not then presented as an option. And in the meantime, Puerto Rico uh, continues to be the poorest region in the United States. Uh, our income per capita in Puerto Rico is one third of the average income per capita in the United States, which I should say is the same relationship of 50 years ago, one third of the per capita income. So in the process, Puerto Rico is shackled in its capacity to develop its own economy and becomes an ever more dependent appendix of the United States. How do people in Puerto Rico view the U.S. jurisdiction and its responsibilities? Well, uh, as I think you can, you can imagine, there are mixed feelings. Uh, because on the one hand, people's perception and self-esteem have been eroded by so many years of colonialism and by a sense of impotence. Uh, and at the same time, they can see with their own eyes signs of modernity, because after all, we are a part of, of, of the, a poor part, but still a part of the economy, of a very large economy, such as the United States. And people tend to feel uncertain and fear that if there were not that political nexus, that that would mean that Puerto Rico uh, would be even worse off. So people on the one hand fear uncertain, have fear and uncertainty. But on the other hand, there is also resentment and there is also disappointment that after a hundred years, Puerto Rico continues to be, politically speaking, a, 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 a subordinated colonial uh, uh, country and economically, an impoverished one from the point of view of its own national development.